what's good y'all welcome to my review for Shazam uh, just got back from the theater not too long ago and overall I gotta say this movie was amazing I loved Shazam uh, now first let's get this out of the way first which Captain Marvel movie is better this or Captain Marvel I will have I honestly will say I have to give the slight edge to Shazam I thought it was a bit better um, I thought it was a bit better but, so I'm sure that, so yeah, you know, rejoice DC fans, as me, a Marvel fan, needs, bows down to our DC overlords, that DC is now beating the MCU and something. Um, but I say I only got a guess, like, because I only liked it a little bit more than Captain Marvel. I still love both those movies, but if you ask me, like, if, which one did you like more, I would have to give the slight edge to Shazam. So, let's get into this. So the movie is... So the movie is directed by David Sandberg and stars Zach, uh, Zachary Levi, um, Aster Engel, Jack Dylan Grazer, Mark um, uh, Mark Strong, and many more. So the plot of uh, Shazam, I'm about to call Captain Marvel. Which in case y'all don't know, you're wondering, like, what the hell are you talking about Captain Marvel? Shazam used to be called Captain Marvel back in the day, in the early days, it was comic world. But through legal shenanigans, DC lost the rights to, D to Captain Marvel. Marvel instantly scooped that shit up. Hence why, you know, Shazam is called Shazam and Captain Marvel is called Captain Marvel. Uh, and so... So as I say, so the plot of the movie is that Billy Banton is a 14-year-old foster kid. He's on the run. Well, not okay. He's not on the run, but he's looking for his mom. He's constantly been. He's been. He's been constantly like leaving and running away from foster homes, trying to find who his mom is. Has some run with the police, and then who he's in to led to this new foster family. They he has you no. Know, so they got a new family, and while this is all going down, he ends up meeting this wizard, and of course is then bestowed the powers of Shazam, and of course, it goes from there. Um, so first off, let me talk about the cast. So, I gotta say, Zachary, uh, Zachary Levi, he did amazing, <laughs> you know, even the cast, they call him Captain Marvel in here. <laughs> I'm looking up the cast on Google, and they say right who's playing, it still says Captain Marvel. <laughs> I just find that funny. He was great, the jokes, the humor was great with him trying, with him embodying, like, this 14-year-old kid who hasn't really had anything really great in life, just been sold all these awesome powers, and, and as he tries to act like an adult, it's really humorous. Like, there was this one scene. Uh, that was kind of showed off in the trailers a little bit, where he's at the gas station, he says, I'd like to purchase some of your finest beer, please. Like, stuff like that was fucking amazing. There's also this one scene where it's like, da -da -da -da. you know, and, you know, they got the little lightning stuff. Um, that was amazing. Um, um, the, um, um, the, um, uh, a Ashley Angel, who plays Billy Batson himself, did an amazing job. He was fantastic in the movie. I love what they did with him. He was great. He was definitely a great job. I thought he was great. Uh, but the kid that plays... Oh, Freddy. Hold on. Where is he? Okay, Jack... Yeah, Jack Dylan Grazer. He was probably my favorite part in the movie, honestly. Because this dude also reminds me a lot of Izuku Midoriya from Hirowaka as his fanboy. But instead of, like, you know... Uh, or Miles, how he is in Spider-Man PS4, where Miles in Spider-Man PS4 is a massive Spider-Man fanboy, Izuku's massive uh, hero fanboy of the heroes in Japan, and here, he's a massive fanboy of DC heroes, and he, every time we see him on screen, he's always wearing a DC-related t-shirt, whether it's a Superman shirt, which when I saw that, I was like, I'm now more excited for this movie, because, of course, he's rocking the Man of Steel. When I saw the movie, I was also rocking a t-shirt. Of the man, so you'll see him rocking a Batman T-shirt, a couple Wonder Woman T-shirts that looked really, really cool. And I want one of those Wonder Woman T-shirts and an Aquaman T-shirt as well. Even got some memorabilia from the different heroes. Like he actually has like a replica Batarang, uh, has a bullet that was that apparently was that was shot uh, to Superman, which of course deflected. He has that and some other stuff, man. It's it's really cool. He was my favorite part of the hero because uh, he was a lot. He reminded me a lot of me as his massive DC fan, but of course me, I'm a Marvel guy. So yeah, uh, he was the best part of the movie in my personal opinion. The rest of the cast do a great job. Um, who else? Let me see who else we got here. Um, Mark Strong, uh, uh, no, uh, Cooper a Andrews, this dude was amazing, like, he was definitely, like, the, I would say, like, one of the emotional parts of the movie, like, he's, like, the warmest soul you will ever see, ever, <laughs> like, this dude is so caring, he has so many different other fox kids, he has adopted, there was, like, three or four others, oh, wait, but there was one, this one kid here, uh, I'm trying to see if I can remember his, uh, see if I can find him here. Ah, oh, man, I, I don't see him on here. But there is uh, uh, Ian Chin. I think that's who he is. 
plays Yuji. He's this Asian kid, and my god, was he so fucking hilarious. Like, this dude is the most... <laughs> The like most cliche gamer you'll ever see. Like, this man is like he like the man's out here playing some FPS like and he strips like trash on a two thousand like die die and other stuff and then is and then you know um uh, Co Cooper comes in there is like hey kid it's you know it's after dark and he's like when did it become after dark I'm like Jesus fucking Christ <laughs> there was this one time where it says oh yeah because I played Watch Dogs I might have hacked into some federal uh some federal systems there's other times where it's like fucking <laughs> Mortal Kombat <laughs> or it's like or, or it's Street Fighter it's fucking hilarious he was probably like him and he like him like him and um, Jack, those two are like without the highlights of the movie for me. They were so. I mean, I love those two. I'll get more into other stuff that's happened with these guys in the spoiler section of this review. Um, and yeah, the rest of the cast does a pretty good job. Problems I have with the movie, uh, the comedy was really, really good. I would, I think I kind of like the comedy in Captain Marvel a little bit more, but then just because Marvel has comedy down to a science, and plus Goose. Goose was all was like the best part of Captain Marvel, so yeah. Uh, I so I think I, I like the comedy a little bit more in that one, but uh, also like I said, Zach Efron, uh, not Zach Efron, <laughs> Zach Le uh, Zachary Levi's uh, uh, the rest of the cast did a uh, banged up job. Um, I liked how self aware this movie is. Like this is definitely a movie that's very self aware of the superhero genre, and I like how. Uh, where there's so many different times in the, throughout the movie where they kind of like poke fun at other superheroes. Um, and another thing I love about this movie was I love how we really like this is really the first movie in the DCEU which, which I'm yes I know it's now called The Worlds of DC but this Aquaman and Wonder Woman 84 were all made when the DCEU was still a thing so I'm going to call this the DCEU uh, till you know after those movies are done. Uh, where we really see how the effects the DCEU have really affected the larger um, or the, the events of the other movies have really affected the main universe, because, um, like, like, after, after Avengers, we saw how that has had, had an effect on the rest of the here, on the rest of the MCU, like, in, um, where we see, like, people holding figures, uh, of course, you know, there was parts in Jessica Jones Season 2, which talk a lot, which is probably the most references to the main MCU we've seen in any of the Netflix series. So, like I said, the kids rocking, like, there's people rocking Batman backpacks, Superman bad, which also, uh, Freddy was also rocking a Superman backpack. Respect there, brother. Respect repping the Man of Steel. Now, where the hell is Man of Steel 2, Warner Brother? Huh? Give me Man of Steel 2 already. Come on. Give me Man of Steel 2. Anyway, enough of me, enough of my rant. Um, you know, I like how we see how the effect is. Like I said, people wearing, you know, DC-related merchandise. We see action figures. Toys, b backpacks, T-shirts, whole nine yards. I love that we're really starting to see the bigger effects and how it has on the main world of what has happened in the DCEU. So that was great. Um, what else? Uh, the fights were pretty good. I really dug the fights that were in this movie. The soundtrack eh, was actually pretty good. There was a nice couple of tracks that got in here. There was even a Queen song that was also playing here too. So that was pretty nice. Um, yeah, that's about it for I have really for positives. Like I said, the cast was great. And everything. But now let's get into the negative. Oh, and also, one thing I gotta say. Um, I can't go into much details of this movie, but I won't lie, the second half of this movie was amazing. There were two scenes in particular that honestly saved this movie for me, because if not, I probably would come out here saying this is probably like the poor man's Man of Steel, and probably the worst DCU movie we've gotten since BVS. Now, I would say I would still like this over BVS, but, you know, I would definitely put on the lower tier of the DCEU. Uh, but these, there's these two scenes later on in the movie, around the second half, that really save movie knowledge. Just like, okay, I, I, I gotta give this a higher grade. So I'll go more into detail. Whether was to, we'll talk more about those two scenes at the end at the you know the spoiler section. So let's get into the negatives. I only really have one major problem with this movie, and it's um, Mark Strong's character. Uh, he as a villain was pretty weak. Uh, like, like, there was, like, and when, like, we start in the movie, we see kind of, like, a flashback of his, which was very Harry Potter-esque. There was even a Harry Potter reference in the movie, and literally, when the title Shazam pops up, it's in the exact, it's exactly like how it appears in the Harry Potter movies. Like, I know Warner Brothers owns right Harry Potter, but y'all are uh, kind of going a little too hard with these Harry Potter references. Not that I'm complaining, I love me some Harry Potter. So, 
he was just not that very interesting. I didn't think, like, you know, we see him when he's a kid, and we grow up, we see that he's told the same grudge, and has been dedicated his whole life to this one thing for all eternity. I'm just like, nah, you know, he's not very interested. He's very one-dimensional. And as after we've gotten such great villains, like, you know, like, we after we got, um, you know, Ocean's Master and Aquaman, eh, you know, hell, I think I even like the scrolls more than this guy in God the Marvel, if I'm being honest. But, you know. So, yeah, that's really the only major problem I have with this movie. Uh, besides that, overall, I would definitely recommend this movie. If you're a fan of Shazam, I definitely say this is probably definitely going to be... I definitely recommend you guys go check this movie out if you haven't already. If you are a fan of the DCEU, definitely check it out. And if you're a fan of the MCU, but you're not really a big fan of the DC movies because you find them too dark, I'd say give, definitely give Shazam a watch. I think this is going to be a movie that a lot of MCU guys... MCU fans that don't really like how dark and gritty the DCU movies are, they'll probably really do this movie because this is probably like the most... MCU, DCU movie we've gotten, but I wouldn't say it's, um, like on the same quality as most MCU movies, if I'm, if I'm being honest. And the comedy is great, it's definitely more of a comedy, but it ain't like Thor Ragnarok comedy where, you know, it's not like that kind of, it's not as much of a comedy as that one was, if, if, in my personal opinion, anyway. So overall, I would give Shazam a 9.5 out of 10, guys. So, let's now begin in the sports discussion in 3, 2, 1. Excuse me. All right, y'all is still here, so let's get into the um, spoilers. So we start this movie off. We have um, this is when we see um, you know Mark Stone's character, strong character's backstory. He's a uh, you know was a kid fighting with his like this magic eight ball, and you know his brother's like you know you know it's like why do you keep playing with that? You know they get into an accident. He meets the wizard Shazam or whatever the wizard's called. And uh, when he gets there to like see if he's worthy of being of bestowing power of him, he he uh, puts a test where he has like this ball over here as the rest of the devil seven uh, seven deadly sins. Well, I gotta say the CGI of the seven deadly sins was also really good, really good. Oh, and I also forgot to mention ah uh, crap. There's both the post credit scene and end credit scene. I meant to guys mention in this as far as free discussion, but in the spoiler-free uh, review, part of the review, but you know, yeah, yeah it's a DC movie. Everyone's gonna say over the credits. Most people are anyway. Right, anyway. So what I was saying. So he ends up failing the test instantly. He goes over to touch it, but you know the you know the the wizard is like, nah, man, you ain't worthy of these powers. Be gone. So he gets rid of him, and then he gets in a car accident. I thought his dad legit died here, but he ended up just losing his legs. And from there, he has this whole grudge against his father and brother for what happened. And he's now made his life's work to get back right back into where the wizard to get back there. So he has this whole thing where we got people over here be like, oh yeah, I met this wizard. Like I said, this is when the Harry Potter reference comes in there. And other stuff. And then we see this room and it's covered with symbols and everything as he's trying to figure out how it gets there and everything. Um, but let's get into like, the main things that I want to talk about. The two scenes. The two scenes in this movie that really made Shazam for me. So, let's go. So, first off, when... Billy Batson and his mom reunite. Because as we know, throughout the movie, he, you know, is looking for his mom. He tries to go over there to find his, a woman named Rachel. She finds her and it ends up just being a black woman, which I thought that scene was pretty funny. Uh, and there's also this one time where he finds, where he like, where he like, kind of like, uh, sneaks into like a police car, trying to use their computers to figure out where his parents are. Uh, like, you know, he's a bit of a detective out there. And that scene was also pretty cool, funny with the cops. Uh, but when he finally realizes, this is when, um, Ian comes out and like, yeah, I play Watchdog, I might have hacked into some federal, you know, systems, you know, to find this, where we find out that her mom went back to her maiden name. He goes over there. And it's, of course, in this, like, you know, dingy apartment complex. There's shit going on all over the rooms and everything. Oh, there's this one scene. <gasps> oh, there's this one scene. Oh, my God, I was dying so much. Where he goes into, the, like, this place called Gentleman's Club, which I'm pretty sure that was a strip club. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure that was a strip club. He goes in there. <laughs> and, of course, you know, him and Freddy go in there. Freddy doesn't really last long. He gets some wings, and then they leave. But when, um... Mark Strong is coming out, which I love this one joke. There's this scene where Mark Strong is doing this whole speech, like, I will defeat you and eat your eyes and everything. But since we're like a mile away from each other, <laughs> you know, Billy can't hear a word he's saying. And I just love that joke. And how far he's like, brother, I, he's like, bro, I can't hear you. You're a mile away from me. That scene was so fucking funny. Uh, so it's about time to get distracted. Um, 
So he gets there, uh, meets his, and knows of one last thing about the gentleman's club. There's another part where he's chasing them down after they went, after they went inside there, after they went inside, uh, back into the to the lair. They go in there, and when they do, he says, you know, think of a place to work guys out there. It's the gentleman's club, and seriously, so they have this little, you know, there's a, like the little girl, which I don't know what her name was. Her name is slipping my mind at the current moment. Uh, it was like Deborah or Dar, Dar, Dar Darlin, Darling. I don't, I forget her name. She's like, <laughs> you have the older sister cover your eyes as they get out of there, and he's like, really, this is what you picked for? What the first thing? Like, I'm sorry, and then she sees. <laughs> But there's some glitter on Billy. She's like, oh, I want some glitter. She's like, not from them. I'm like, brother, what the hell are you doing in there, man? Then she made me die. But as I was saying, so they get over, so he gets over to his mom's place. When he gets there, he knocks on the door. His mom comes back. He's like, hey, mom, I made my way home. She with the compass and everything. And we find out why, she, why he never found her, his mom. It's because, and why she never ended up looking for him. It's because when he was actually, when the cops got him, she saw him there. But since she was only 17 years old, which, whoo, yikes. And it looked from her, like, her baby was pretty big, so at least two years, like, at least one or two years old, maybe even four or five, so she was young when she had him. I'm, she looked like she had him in, like, maybe 15. Whoo, yikes. Anyway, so... When she so when she found him there, she ends up just leaving him because she thinks that they would have done a better job raising her raising him than she could. So she straight up abandoned a Billy when he was young because she didn't think she could handle the responsibility. And that whole scene there, the emotion was there, great stuff. That scene was <clears throat> And so there was another scene. This scene when I was like, God damn it, why did God damn why can't I get another Superman movie? <laughs> Uh, there was this one scene around the end of the movie where, uh, Billy is then thrown into, like, this little, like, area. There's a father and daughter sitting there as they're kind of huddled together. He hands her this tiger, which is, like, the stuffed animal that he won when he, when he, when his mom was doing a little, like, a dark game. It's like, here, hold this, hold it tight. And I was just like, God damn it, why don't I get another Superman movie, man? <laughs> and I already know. People are going to come out here and be like, Oh, this is the true Superman movie we should have gotten from the start. Man of Steel is terrible. There was too much destruction. Never mind the fact that Avengers came out the previous year and they were not complaining then about the destruction. Like, Who the fuck complains about the destruction of a superhero movie? Two, two Kryptonians are going out. No shit, shit's going to fucking blow up. And, and they're like, Oh, the Henry Cavill Superman was terrible because he is not like the god Christopher Reeves from the 70s where he is wasting time saving cats from trees and it's completely unrelatable. <sighs> I have made so many videos and talked about so many times why I hate the 70s movies. Man of Steel, I shouldn't even give a shit about Superman now. He's one of my favorite heroes. And I'm and I'm already sorry to break a sweat here. Getting kind of angry so I'm going to make sure before I before I before I like your faint or something if I'm, how angry if I'm from how I'm getting I better you know just stop here while I'm, while I'm ahead. So you know, like, I thought that scene was also great. I was just like, fuck me, man. I want a Superman movie. I want another. I want a man. I want a man still, too. Because, you know, I know I love Superman. Um, so, there was also this other part around the end of the movie where we see Superman actually appears. And when I saw Superman, I was like, no. No, 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 no. Y'all, no, 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 no. Don't y'all play with me. Don't y'all play with me. And then... We, and then when we see him about to sit down, it cuts. We only see up to where his neck is. Which makes me think they couldn't get Henry Cavill to come to do this thing, so they got some random schmuck towards him. And let me tell you, when it cut back to the end, when it cut to the end, Chris, I was so triggered. Because I wanted to see my man Henry Cavill wearing the Superman suit again, because god damn it, do I love Mr. Superman. That really triggered me, guys. That really fucking triggered me. Uh, we also find out that actually other kids end up also inheriting the powers of Shazam, which, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't it in the comics in the original time all five of them would become Shazam? They would all say Shazam at the same time, they would all become Shazam? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's actually what happened in the comics. Uh, there's also this one part in the end credits where we see two of them are apparently faster than Flash. I have to call bullshit because I doubt any of them have access to Speed Force. I mean, I don't know much about Flash, but I know that he's like the fastest thing out there, especially with the, with the Speed Force. So anyway... 
that's all I gotta say about the sports discussion for this for my review, guys. So hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Flugged. Links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time. <laughs>